so it feels really good. You guys good? Awesome. Okay, from there we're going to slide into the wrist. Just let the swing straighten your arm out, so let the swing, swing slide in. And then pull it overhead. You'll have an X in the swing. And then you're threading both hands through. Clasp your hands if you can, okay? And drop the chest. So this is a little bit more of like the TRX Pilates stuff that I do some more of the strengthening and endurance. And we can make it super mellow. So if straight arms is too much on the shoulders, just bend the elbows because you will have that experience as well. So if you can stay with straight arms, we're going to inhale and press the stand. Inhale up. Lift, lift, lift. Exhale, drop it. You'll notice it's pretty hard with straight arms, so just go as deep as you can for today. Inhaling up, exhaling, dropping in. Really good. One more time. Inhaling, press. Now stay up here. We're going to take our left arm, thread it over top. We get the X out of the swing, and then we drop. So we're going to find center. Yes, everything just flows from one to the up, to the next. So you can get the X out of the swing, hun. Um, Ray. Just pull the arm over top, yeah. It doesn't really matter, it just sets us up for the next move. So we have right hand in center. So this might be as deep as we go in the twist, right? We're gonna pull down strongly, make sure you're twisting on axis, or we can actually reach around for the opposite ankle. So right hand grabs her left ankle, and we deepen. So again, that would just give people an option to do more intermediate and let the beginners stick with the basics. All right, we come back through center. Let that swing slide into the wrist, pull it overhead. So this time it's completely different. We're gonna hook the swing, drop our elbows. So elbows stay bent here. And depending on the class, and you can tell by your audience who wants to do what. Some people are not into it, but I usually have half men, half women in my classes because I do a lot of strength and, in, and endurance and dynamic movements. So our hips are back. So yeah, if you. Yeah, keep the knees bent if you need to, that's fine. So when we press up, we straighten the arms at the same time, we get a nice tricep curl. Use your belly. So don't use your back to lift yourself up, use your arms. Exhale, drop, and come back down. And we're gonna go over this a bunch of times, so don't worry about all the details, but just remember bent elbows, and then straighten the arms to, to get into the triceps. Exhale, down. So the slower you go, the more challenging it is, and then the more you get engagement. Inhale, up. Straighten the arms, and then come up to stand. Just walk yourself up, let the swing help you. How's that feeling? You guys good? Taller. <laughs> I know, right? So that's, that's actually all of one and then two A. So two B is this is why I lowered my swing too, because um, we can make it lower for you if you need. But we're gonna take the swing and we're gonna stretch it down into the hip flexors. So everyone do this, straight arms. Just hold on to the swing and press it straight down. Very like this, bring the swing out in front of you. We don't ever want to struggle. There's no need to struggle. If we're struggling, we're in the wrong place. You bend your elbows and press it down. Yeah, there it is. You got it. Straight arms. So stay here, straight arms. So we can actually lift ourselves up if we want to get really playful about it. There you go, good. Really nice. And then we're just gonna fall for forward into a forward fold. I'm gonna do the same way, same direction, because I can see you when I'm upside down. <laughs> okay, so forward fold. Let yourself come all the way down to the ground. Feet stay on the ground. So make sure the balls of the feet are grounded. Your heels are gonna be lifted unless your swing is low and just energetically pull them down, anchoring in. Yep, so the most important thing here is that the swing is exactly on the hip flexors. They're not on the bladder. It's not on the organs. Yeah, there you go. Bring it down a little bit more. <coughs> Bend your elbows and hang. Give yourself five deep breaths. <coughs> there you go. So you can lean forward a little bit more, Carrie, so you don't have to ground your heels. You actually want to lean forward. Or walk your feet back. So, okay. yeah, there you go. So your upper body drops more. <coughs> Very good. If you guys ever need a water break or a bathroom break, feel free to take care of yourself yourself that option. <laughs> Beautiful guys. Okie dokie. Now from here, we're just going to press our arms straight, hands down. Let's actually reach back and grab for the ankles. 
rock back and forth from heel to toe again. Just notice that you can pull in and go a little bit deeper. I'd like to keep the feet hip distance. I don't usually have the feet together. I like to keep them hip distance. And then I'm going to release my ankles and walk into a down dog. So our arms are going to be nice and strong, like we're in a down dog. Our heels aren't necessarily going to touch. We're just going to pull them down energetically. So in our down dog, we're going to practice coming into what I call the cat's meow. So it's like a cat cow and a down dog got together. <laughs> and me. There's no cat poses in yoga. So we're going to pull ourselves forward and arch and open. And then we're going to exhale and we're going to press back and round. Okay. Inhale, pull, arch, open. Exhale, round in and deepen. Really good. Inhale, pulling forward. Exhale, deepen. So that's really basic, right? So let's add one leg lifted with that sequence. So inhale, arch, pull the left leg up, and look forward. Exhale, pull the knee towards the nose and round in. Really good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, deepen, squeeze. Inhaling, open. Exhaling, squeeze everything in. Awesome. Last time, inhale, lift. Exhale, just land it. And now, what, now that you're back in your down dog, I want you to just play in the space a little bit. That's why we call it aerial yoga play. So just explore what it's like to have the swing hold you as you shift from side to side. Okay, roll around. Just notice how that really deepens in the hip flexors and massages, <coughs> massages out that sticky spot. And also notice the swing is like your favorite assistant, right? Mm -hmm. So they're pulling your hips up. You get to lift your tailbone, your sit bones towards the sky, and at the same time, ground your heels. Really good, guys. So let's try second side. Inhale, right leg comes up, and then we're going to arch and open. So pull onto your fingertips when you arch. And then exhale, press back and pull the knee in. There you go. Inhale, lift. Exhale, squeeze. Inhaling up. And you can rock back and forth in this pose and have some fun with it. Can you feel how the swing has that little bit of momentum to it? Really good. Inhale, lift. And then exhale, just land it. Back in our down dog, okay? So from our down dog, we have so many variations that we can do. Um, I usually don't get into <clears throat> the upside down dog until um, tomorrow. So. I'm gonna show you guys how to get there, and we're gonna do a couple variations. We'll revisit tomorrow. But let's try inhaling, lifting the left leg one more time. So a little bit of dynamics, just because every single person does this the first time. This is the outside of the swing here. This is the inside, okay? This is the outside of the swing. This is the inside, always. So we always hook the foot outside in. Okay. So hook the foot on the outside of the swing. Yeah. We just karate kick it up there. Keep the knee bent a lot. Is that too much on your knee? Uh, I'm just trying to be cautious. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Keep the knee bent. Keep the knee oh, bent. Okay. okay. Cool. Good. Yeah. So we always hook outside in. All the poses, okay? So it gets a little confusing when we're upside down. So I like to just <laughs> show people. Okay? So now <clears throat> this is a one-legged upside down dog. And to come into... Um, the full upside down dog, we're going to lift the second leg, hook it outside in, keep the knees bent. If you don't keep the knees bent towards the mat, you are going to fall out. So bend your knees, Ray. Bend your knees a lot. Bend your knees down towards the ground. Down towards the ground. Yes, down towards the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your anchor point is at your hips. If you lift your knees, you're going to lose your anchor. Okay? Now extend your arms like you're in a down dog. There you go. Chest down towards the ground. Beautiful. So we just went from down dog to upside down dog. Good, Is that nice. fun? Yep. All right, let's try some chaturangas here. So we're going to pull ourselves forward into handstand hands, and then we're going to do tiny little dips. Oh. Right? So with our, with our arms straight, we can bend our elbows towards our ribs, not out flare to the side. You can only, I always pull my mat forward if I need to get it right underneath me. 
<clears throat> and then notice that if I walk my hands back underneath my plumb plum line, right underneath my shoulders, then I'm doing handstand push-ups. And those ones are much harder, mm -hmm. right? But there's a, a couple different variations for that. I just wanted to show you. So we're going to walk our hands forward into handstand hands, and then we're going to come into plank pose just by straightening our legs out, level with the earth. So down, level with the earth, down. Okay, most people bring their legs up too high. You want to be horizontal. Okay, great. Now from plank pose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rock forward and back. I want to bring one knee to the elbow on the same side. So knee to elbow, okay? Just practice that, rocking back and forth. Good. So our floating plank is similar to being on the ground, <laughs> but it gives us a lot more space to play. And just like all the other poses, there's so many different things that we could do. We could do this with straight legs and swing up to the side if you want to play a little bit from side to side. Yep, good. And then we can also do a frog leap. So we bend both knees. We pull, come into a crow pose, Hakasana, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're all just playing in the space. So. And then what we want to do is we want to pull forward and we're going to land it. Wide straddle forward fold. Awesome, guys. Hold on to your ankles here. Nice wide legs and just let your head go. <sighs> That's beautiful. So it's really important to come out of it with as much intentionality as we come in. So we're going to slowly heel toe our feet together. Just walk your feet hip distance toward, towards one another. Press your weight forward. I call it peppermint patty. So you come into a diagonal and then you press yourself up. Grab the swing on the way up. Press all the way forward, come up. Yeah, so keep tension on the swing the whole time. That's beautiful, guys. So you'll just notice that people will just bop out, bop up out of poses. You know, they're just here, and they just come up. But we wanna use that momentum to help ourselves up, and it also releases the back. Okay, so we always walk forward, and then walk back to come in and out of the swing. Really good, guys. Okay, so we did our folded so let's let's do folded leaf and then we'll be we'll be done with this sequence. We did the chaturangas, the one-legged down dog, leg raises, which I call the cat's meow. <laughs> it feels good too. So let's just go back and do a folded leaf. So this this is where I'm just gonna show you a mini headstand. You guys can see me okay? Doing doing alright? Okay. Swing at the waist, we come into our forward fold. See how I'm leaning forward on a diagonal? And come down. I'm gonna bend my elbows and just lift my feet just slightly, about six inches off the ground. Okay? So make sure that you're on your forearms here. So drop down. So this is called folded leaf or floated leaf. And then from here, if we want to bend our knees, so bend your knees, so keep them towards your chest so that you have your anchor point, then you can clasp your hands underneath your head and come into your tripod headstand. There you go. So there's no weight on the top of our heads, right? We can lower the swing, so there would be a little bit more weight. <clears throat> but just take five breaths here. Just pull your elbows in so they're underneath the shoulders, just like you would in a, in a normal headstand, and press your forearms down into the ground. There's one other variation that we could do here, is we can actually come into our upside down dog leg, so you can hook your feet outside in onto the swing. Just keep the knees bent, just hook the feet. There you go. Good. Very nice. So if you hook your feet, you'll notice that you'll come down a little bit further. So this would be a little bit more advanced than just the bent knees into the chest, but that's an easy way to go from the folded leaf, which is an acro yoga term, an acro yoga pose, into our headstand, our first inversion. So to come out, we just bend our knees back into our chest and then straighten our legs level with the earth. Make sure that they're about six inches off the ground. So then uh, all of a sudden you can feel our head lifts, our hands can straighten and we're going to walk ourselves forward. So try walking out again, keep tension on the swing the whole time and then come on up, butt back. Hold on to the swing at the top. Really good. Yeah. So very few people without support can get into a headstand for five minutes in the middle of the room. So it really makes it accessible for people to get the benefits of the inversions without any of the strain 
on the body. 